I received a request from one of my viewers asking me to make a video on something about investing in real estate or buying a house and owning a house or renting. Which one is more beneficial? Which one would I recommend? This is what we are going to talk about. Stay with me until the very end because that is where a lot of people are surprised with what, with what I'm going to say. I have made this recommendation, my suggestions, long time ago. And a lot of people were surprised. It's, it was like an eye-opener for them. This is a very important topic, so stay with me. That's what we'll talk about. A lot of people are under the impression that investing in real estate is easy. It will make you rich, it will make you money instead of renting. That is not necessarily the case. It could happen. It could happen in few cases, but many times it will cost you more money when you buy real estate. Now, does that mean I would recommend that you rent? Not necessarily. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's start. Let's compare owning versus renting. When you own, you have mortgage to pay, which includes principal and interest. You have utilities to pay, but so does renting. You have utilities to pay because usually utility is separate. Telephone, electricity, gas, oil, whatever. Repairs and maintenance, usually the landlord takes care of that, especially major ones. Minor ones, you may just want to go to Home Depot and fix something up yourself. It's easier than calling the landlord and waiting for a few days for him to show up. But large maintenance, for example, shoveling of the snow, cutting the grass. Well, shoveling the snow is not applicable in the Philippines, but cutting the grass. Property taxes. Oh, you cannot ex escape property taxes from the government. And you don't pay that when you rent. Condo fees. If a condominium. Only if a condominium. Now, of course, when you're renting, it depends on your agreement with the lease. Okay? It depends on your agreement. But most of the time, or many times, condo fees are included in the rent. Property insurance. For example, I'm paying for my house about uh, 1200 1500 for property insurance. Whereas if you're renting, you only insure the content and maybe $20, $30 and that'll be it. So for practical purposes, there is no property insurance when you're renting. Aha, uh -huh. here's the thing. All those are cash outflows. Here's a positive. Those cash outflows will be re uh, reduced by the tax benefit you will get. Why? Because you can deduct uh, principal and interest and property taxes on your tax return. Well, I don't know yet in the Philippines what is deductible or not. Eventually, I will know. Maybe. So, that is your total expense. And look at rent. You only have utilities, minor repairs if any, condo fee if agreed upon, insurances and contents only. Really, the only major thing is the utilities that you have to pay. And the proceeds on the sale of your house, less selling expenses, less gain if applicable. Now, let's think about this. People are saying, oh, gee, when I sell my house, I'll get this money. You know, okay, yeah, you, it's true, you'll get your money. But if you look at it closely, all those years you are paying for mortgage, interest, utilities, etc., etc., and then you deduct how much you receive, guess what? This is the eye-opener I'm talking about. Most likely, not all the time, but most likely, what you will receive is smaller than what you spent. Keep in mind, there is a cost to home ownership. 
and your cost is going to be this small amount, okay, that is going to be the higher expense compared to the proceeds you will receive. Surprised? Think again about this. There is cost to home ownership. Now, by the way, what we're talking about here is making sure that you are comparing apples to apples. Don't buy a house that will cost you $1,000 a month and compare that against renting a house where you're only paying $500 a month. You have to compare the two things. Extremely important, okay? If you are thinking of comparing buying a $2,000 a month house, make sure that the, the, the apartment or the house that you're renting is comparable in quality, location, amenities. Obviously, you will make more money or uh, you will spend less money renting if instead of buying a $200,000 house, you just stay in a house that rents for $100 a month. That's not okay. You have to compare both in the same category. Extremely important. So this is the first eye-opener that I was talking about. People did not realize that in fact they're spending more money or they're spending money and all of the, all, all, all of the time they think it is an investment. Well, it's sort of an investment, but I will not call it an investment. You're reducing your cost of housing by owning your own property. Surprise? Hmm. Now, the question is, how much rent do you pay? Think about it. You're looking at comparable house. If the owner spends all this money, okay, he needs to tack on a certain amount of profit margin. Otherwise, he's foolish for buying a house and spending all this money and charge you less. The rent payment. By the way, on this, I don't mean to, to the extent, for example, utilities are getting paid, that will not be included, of course, in looking at the numbers that he's going to be charging you. Uh, if there are other things like the tax benefit, he's going to take that into account or he may not. He might say, no, that is for me, that is not for them. So he may say, I'll, I'll charge you the equivalent of my mortgage, property taxes, which is not being passed on to you, estimated repairs, which is not being passed on to you, not utilities, condo fees, if the agreement says the, the, the landlord will be the one to condo fees, to pay the condo fees, property insurance, of course, he will have to take that into account, and then he will tack on the profit margin. So guess how much he's going to charge you? A lot, a lot. And that is a significant cost of renting is the rent payment because you have to cover those. So does that make sense? Now, does that mean you should not rent? Not necessarily. Like what I said, cost of ownership, if you are not renting as an, investment, as an investor, if you are not renting out the house, you're staying in the house, the proceeds you will get is less than the expenses, expenses you would have paid. For example, I lived my house for 35 years, close to 40 years. If I add the property taxes I pay a year, the mortgage payments I pay a year, etc., etc., it's a lot, okay? So now let's talk about what is the bottom line. The bottom line is this. I would recommend, or I would say, it's better to own if you have money for down payment and sufficient income to make those monthly payment obligation better. Owning gives you the freedom to make changes or improvement without seeking approval from the landlord. You can do whatever you want. You want to build a swimming pool, go ahead and build a swimming pool. That freedom, that's a lot of value. I'm not adding here. So these are the uh, uh, factors that you have to consider. Owning gives you pride of ownership. <clears throat> you own the house. Nobody can kick you out. You own the house. Well, except for the mortgage company if you fail to pay. <laughs> Owning allows you to reduce your taxable income and save you money 
especially if you are in a high income bracket. Owning more or less, more or less, gives you stable cash flow unless you obtain variable rate mortgage. So, when you obtain a fixed rate mortgage and let's say your monthly payment is $600, $800, that will not change. That will not change for the duration of the mortgage, whereas rent will go up every year. In fact, if you're renting, the landlord, if he's smart enough, even though his cost is going to stay the same, if he knows the value is going up, he will increase the rent, at least at the inflation rate. And you know there's always inflation every year. Owning gives you the ability to obtain equity loan to finance your emergency cost requirement, education, medical, etc. Because when you buy something for let's say 300,000, each year that thing appreciates. So let's say after 20 years, your house that you bought for $200,000 is now worth 800,000. You have so much equity in the house, you can borrow against that equity which is not available to you if you're renting because you have nothing to provide as a security to the loan. Owning is a way of forced savings since it requires you to set aside money for when you decide to sell. <clears throat> so you're like making monthly mortgage payment, payment, payment. So it's like a forced savings. And then lo and behold, 20, 30 years later, when you sell the house, you get a lot of money that's like for savings although I say the net result is still likely I say I say not all the time but most likely to be a net cost to you extremely important only rent <clears throat> if you have unstable job and may be relocated yeah if you if you're sort of unsecure with your job you may relocate to get another job or you have no money, well, you have no choice. And you want the flexibility of making changes. Okay? Uh, by that, I, I don't mean making changes to the house, but I'm talking about relocating somewhere else because you got sick and tired of one location and you want to uh, change to another location. It'll be a lot easier for you to rent than for you to uh, own and then look for a buyer to sell your house. And also, when you have a house, you tend to accumulate more things. So it makes it more difficult for you to relocate. Look at us. <laughs> Three years in the making, we're still getting rid of stuff. Now, if you want to invest your money on a more lucrative investment, you otherwise would put down on the purchase of a home. So let's say you have $300,000. Say, oh, I can buy a house and the house will appreciate, blah, blah, blah. Well, <clears throat> I could put this investment in stocks, in gold, in something else. You have to be astute to do that, okay? It's not going to be easy, and there's the element of risk. I would say real estate is the least riskiest, especially if you own the house and you live in it rather than renting it and having others to live in the house. Because there is risk to that also when you're getting tenants and you're unlucky enough to get irresponsible tenants and they tend to destroy your house. That is the reason, by the way, that I am not renting the condo and it's been vacant for three years. You might say it's unwise. I say it's wise. Why? I cannot manage it. I'm here in the U.S. and my condo is in the Philippines. So, guys, this is, in a nutshell, the summary of making this decision. I'm not creating another template or Excel. It's just common sense. And that's why I thought rather than confusing you with numbers, giving you a simple conceptual analysis here will allow you to analyze with pencil and paper whether you should invest or own or rent an apartment. Thank you very much for watching. Please do share this with others who might have the same interest. I'll appreciate it if you click like on my video and please do subscribe to my channel unless you have already done so. And don't forget to smash the notification bell so you get notified of new postings. Thank you. God bless and make it a great day.